Hello Sioux Falls, welcome to planning preview for the month of September 2021. We've got a great agenda here today. We've got Jason Bieber with the city of Sioux Falls and in the second half of our program we've got Mayor Tenhaken on with us. Uh, but for the first part of the program as always we're going to go through our agenda items. Jason how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good. Let's uh, we've got a really full agenda for yeah. the month so let's uh, go ahead and get in and talking about what we're planning on uh, doing in our next yeah. agenda. Uh, first up on our list is a rezone from the O Office District to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District. That's at 1737 South Cliff Avenue. So 26 and Cliff, the yep. holiday property. What are they yep, doing? Yep, yep, correct. Uh, so they're they're planning to redevelop that gas station, and just to the west of that, there was an old dental office there. Okay. Uh, they've recently moved out, so that property was zoned office. So they're they're actually going to take that property also zone a commercial kind of push that gas station back towards the west. And if you've ever been in there, I, I'm actually pretty close there and I go there quite a bit and it's, it's a pain to get in and out of there. Yeah. So this will help that intersection. That'd be time. great, push those yeah. entryways a little further off the intersection yeah. and allow people to get in and out. More there. room at the gas pumps, it's tight in there. So yeah. this, this will be a great development there. That's awesome to see. Uh, next on our list is a rezone from the C3 Commercial Community District to the and, and the C2 Community Commercial Co District uh, and office, uh, and that's going over to C2 Commercial Neighborhood Streetcar and RA3 Apartment Residential. That's at 6000 South Cliff Avenue, so 69th and Cliff area, just northeast of there. Yep, yep. Just this is the northeast corner that you've seen kind of uh, head grass, or they've been haying it for quite some time. Really, the only uh, corner in that whole intersection that hasn't developed. Uh, previously, you know, 10, 10, 12 years ago, there was a possibility of a Walmart going there, yep. and, and that had kind of some neighborhood opposition to it. So eventually, I, I think we all think it went in a better location at 85th in Minnesota. And so this land has kind of been vacant. There's been a couple of proposals here and there, but uh, with this, uh, this proposal here, doing some commercial along 69th and Cliff, and then actually do quite a bit of apartments to the north of that area. So really kind of get that corner with a mix of, of retail, which as we had talked about, before the show that neighborhood kind of needs some restaurants bars maybe a bank maybe a gas station and then really getting some more apartments which obviously with our vacancy rates at 99 point some percent we need in that area so yeah that's uh, going to be an interesting to watch one to watch that property's been watched by so many people oh, yeah. for so many years uh, a lot of traffic by there so fun to see some uh, action on that part yeah yeah i think it just really struggled with with people wanting to do just all commercial and sure. it just couldn't make it work and and so this was the component with getting quite a bit of apartments in there to be able to, to make, make that site work and be able to get it developed essentially, so. Very good. Next and on our list is a rezone from C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District over to I-1 Light Industrial District. That's located at 4050 South Grange Avenue. So down uh, by Scott's Lumber on 49th and Grange. Yeah, yep, so this is the parcel that's just east of Scott's Lumber. They've acquired that. As you know, uh, the city's uh, actually getting to the point where we're gonna be putting 49th Street in now. I know people have been waiting for that for a long, long time. And so part of uh, the existing Scott's Lumber uh, back area will be taken as part of right away. Okay. And so they needed some additional space to kind of store their um, you know, wood and that kind of stuff. So this property just to the east here will work out perfect for them. Allow us to get that 49th Street to put in, so. Okay, good, very good. Uh, next on the list is the conditional use permit for on sale alcohol. That's at 3312 South Holly Avenue. So that uh, strip mall there on Holly, kind of by 41st Street. Yep, yep, so it's just that strip mall that has Inca restaurant in it and Great Clips, I believe. Um, they're just looking at taking one of the tennis spaces and doing a casino in there, so. Okay. Very good. Let's hit uh, two of uh, two of these together on our next one. We've got a rezone and preliminary subdivision plan that's going together. Uh, both are located at 250 North Ellis Road, uh, and the rezone is from agricultural uh, over into the PUPUD pedestrian oriented PUD uh, Ellis Road and 12th Street. Tell us what we're doing out there. Yeah, so that's kind of that uh, northeast corner, and what they really want to do is kind of make it a, a really cool uh, pedestrian. 
industry and walkway orientated kind of commercial development um, abutting along there's a, there's a big old excavation site that Sukup did there so kind of a okay. big lake think about to the west there where Cherry Lake is essentially doing that but with commercial on the east side okay um, so yeah if the, everything goes the way that they've been kind of showing in the preliminary plans and the uh, concept plans really 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 cool development where you can walk from one side to the other other along the lake so it could be really cool yeah that's an awesome one to see uh, next on the list is a rezone from the agricultural district to the c3 commercial community district that's at 7409 east minnesota avenue so kind of fairly close to 85th and minnesota down on the south side Yep, correct. So this is kind of, if you if you look between um, Subaru Schulte and then Landscape Garden Centers on the north, there's those two residential properties that um, were outside of city limits. This one we've actually just annexed in, and it's uh, going from the ag to the commercial. So really, we're starting to get those properties to redevelop. Okay. Uh, they're more apt and, and be able to be used as commercial than uh, residential. So really getting this one ready, and then hopefully we'll get the south one at some point, and then kind of Bind those together to do kind of a commercial development along Minnesota Avenue there. So okay, sounds good. And let's go downtown for the next one here. It's a rezone from I-2 Heavy Industrial to the downtown DU PUD district. Uh, so Eighth Street, right next to the railroad tracks. Yep, just to the east side of the railroad tracks. Uh, there's kind of an old industrial building there. We've had somebody approach us about possibly doing uh, a brand new building on that, um, and really. To have it more as character of the downtown to allow it to kind of be pushed all the way up to the sidewalk where you actually the buildings to the east are right now so from a zoning perspective we'd rather kind of still see maybe more of a commercial use there so we're kind of rezoning it to the downtown pud so okay interesting uh the next one uh is uh, kind of by the boulevard or is on the boulevard i should say in mckinnon park area uh it's a rezone from rs single family suburban district uh, into the RHP Single Family Residential Historical Preservation District. So uh, on 21st Street in between 4th and 7th Avenue. Yeah. What are we doing? Yep, so this is kind of a, a cool project. This will be the first time we, we're utilizing that residential historic uh, district, zoning district. Okay. Um, we worked with Diane, who's our historic preservation person, and worked with some of the neighbors along 21st Street, kind of met with them. and and talk to them they're in a historical district um, and talk to them about some options to maybe rezone some of those smaller lots some of the bigger lots and get it really into this historical uh, residential zoning district allows them a little bit more flexibility with some of their setbacks okay um, to be able to go a little less in the back where you kind of see that a lot of these lots are, are pretty long yeah the garages are up to the alley but still gives them the, gives them a lot of those protections that historical properties have so we're going to try and continue to work with that block and see if we can get that whole whole block from fourth to seventh all the way in there so kind of a cool little thing and and it's they kind of are for for this and, and really want to kind of get a little bit more protection so yeah that's yeah. uh the great example of the city mm -hmm. being flexible finding something that works for the neighborhood uh and, mm -hmm. and maybe a, a separate zoning class like this really yeah. that's really works well for them and it's yeah, it's great just different option that we had in shape places so okay. just something else for them to do and give them a little bit more protection so sure Good. Next on the list is a rezone from C2 Neighborhood Commercial and C3 Community Commercial Districts to the Conservation and Live Work Districts. That's at South Darrow Place in Highland at High Line Avenue, so I'm kind of by Dolly Hawk Farms. Yeah, so this will be just north of the total car that was just built out there along a Veterans Parkway. Uh, just uh, rezoning some commercial to the live work, and then there's a conservation pond that's kind of goes over different different uh, parcels, so kind of just getting that all lined up to okay. where it should be. And really, they uh, just a future office is going to get constructed out there. So Okay, gotcha. Let's stay out in that area for the last one. It's a rezone from RA3 Apartment residential high density uh, over to the S1 General Institutional District. That's at 5500 East 18th Street, so out, out kind of by the movie theater out by Dolly. Yeah, Park. just west of the movie theater, you're right there, and just kind of south of Walmart in those apartments. So Active Generation kind of ho kind of owns all of that property east of Foss and down to 18th Street. Um, they're taking a chunk of it and they want to do a big active generations kind of senior citizen facility out there uh, looking through their plans it's more of kind of a, a institutional use than maybe like assisted living facility okay. uh, 
okay. people won't be staying overnight. So that's where we were kind of like, I think we need to get it more of an institutional use. And then the remainder of the property will still be zoned that apartment residential for future, if they utilize it for assisted living or if they sell it for apartments or something like that, so. Okay, awesome. Thanks yeah. for joining us today, Jason, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And stick around for the second half of our program. We're gonna be joined by Mayor Paul Tenhaken as we talk about planning for the future of Sioux Falls. Hey, this is Seth with the City of Sioux Falls Housing Division. I'm here today with today's Home Maintenance Minute uh, to talk to you about your air conditioner and how to take care of it. So one thing that I like to do once a year uh, is to make sure, first and foremost, that your disconnect is turned off. All air conditioners should have a disconnect on the outside as well as on the panel. So you wanna turn the breaker off at the panel, turn your disconnect off outside and then you know there's no electricity in the unit. Okay, then if you look on the top, there's four bolts that hold this fan assembly on. If you take those bolts out, lift this assembly out and off and over to the side a little bit, just take a simple garden hose and go in around the fins on the inside of the unit and spray water from the inside out. And so if you look on the outside of an air conditioning unit, um, there are fins, it's much like a radiator in a car, um, and they get clogged. They get clogged with cottonwood, trees, debris, and, and leaves, and dirt, and dust. And simply going in from the inside and pushing that material out with water um, will clean that up, and it'll keep your air conditioner running much longer. Thanks for being with me today with today's Home Maintenance Minute. Welcome back from the break, Sioux Falls. Thanks for sticking with us. As mentioned, we're joined by Mayor Paul Ten Haken. Mr. Ten Haken, how are you doing hey, today? Hey, I'm good, Eric. How are you, man? Good. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, uh, my pleasure. First time on the program. Yeah, we love to have you. Took you long that. enough. I know. We needed to get that invite out earlier, Three and but and a half we clinched years, you. Man, so. Finally. Thanks for doing this, yeah. and uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on is we get the opportunity of the Planning Commission to so often talk about specific projects, specific mm -hmm. properties, uh, and, and that has a huge effect on people living in those areas uh, and the property owners themselves, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but I think sometimes we forget that the decisions that we make are part of a bigger plan right. uh, and, right. a, and a bigger vision for Sioux Falls, and that's, of course, where you come in as mayor of the, the city. So. Uh, my first question is when you're making that plan for Sioux Falls, you're thinking down 10, 20 years, the decision that I make today is mm -hmm. gonna be something that sticks with us for a long time. What is it that you rely on? What kind of information are you taking in? What people are you talking with to make those decisions? It's a great question, man. Um, and you know, very timely um, tonight, I know this will probably air after this, but I do wanna talk about tonight, we'll be bringing a zoning ordinance for medicinal marijuana dispensaries in our community. Uh, and for me, uh, it's very important to think about those zoning issues, those planning issues, not just one and two years out, but 20 and 30 years out. And so there's a gravity that you feel um, in the chair when you're looking at some of these challenges to say, okay, what may seem like a pretty simple rezone here or a pretty simple decision here, yeah, it makes sense today, but will it make sense in 10 years as T comes towards us and as Lincoln County you know, expands further to the south in terms of Sioux Falls' population there? And, and so uh, we rely really heavily on our planning department, obviously, which sure. Um, you know, the, a mayor is not an urban planner, so we really have to rely heavily on your staff, of which we have an incredible planning department. But we also look at other municipalities and what they're doing. You know, in the case of, of the dispensary ordinances, we've talked a lot with people in North Dakota okay. to determine how they rolled this out. People talked to uh, people in Fargo um, on how this was received in Fargo, who now has two years of, of runway of this program. Was how many uh, dispensaries was enough? How many was too much? Where did you want to put them? What was your sensitive use area? What was your distances and sure. so forth? So uh, it's it's pretty. Um, it, it, it's not really uh, something that you have so much bravado. You think, hey, I know all the answers to this. I'm the mayor. I know what the right solution is. I rely heavily on my team, on the planning and development services team. But then also, the great thing about city government is you can learn from other city governments. Sure. And chances are there's someone who has been through the same challenge that you have been in. And unlike in the private sector where people kind of hoard information, they want to share their, their secrets and so forth, uh, 
in, in city government, it's like, yeah, they'll, they'll show you anything. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is how we did it. Here's our ordinance. This is the problems we had. This is what worked. And go ahead and use it away. So there's kind of this collegial community that helps you with planning challenges. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Because uh, it, it's interesting to me because the regular Joe in Sioux Falls doesn't get to talk with mayors of other towns. So we don't get to hear those conversations. We didn't get to know what they think about us or necessarily what we think about them. Um, what, what, are, what are those mayors saying about Sioux Falls? They, we all hear all the awesome stories that we have going on here. Mm -hmm. Do they hear about that? What do they say about the direction of our town? I will say, you know, one of the cool initiatives that I've been a part of the past three and a half years uh, is called the Bloomberg Harvard City Leadership Program. And it's connecting me with 40 mayors from around the world that are part of this class, for lack of a better term, cohort. And mayor of, you know, Reykjavik, Iceland, to Helsinki, to uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, to Miami, Florida, Seattle, Washington, Charlotte, North Carolina, they're all in my cohort. And then Sioux cool. Falls and Tacoma and Cheyenne, you got some of these small towns. So it's fun when we all get together uh, and, and I can learn from them. But I'll tell you what I've noticed is that Sioux Falls has gone from being a community that people would have to, Sioux Falls, Iowa, that's, no, they yeah, haven't maybe yeah. heard of it, they're trying to place it on a map. So now people have heard of Sioux Falls. They know about Sioux Falls. Uh, and a lot of times their reaction is, it's a great community you have there. It's really growing there, isn't it? They know something about Sioux Falls. Uh, and I think the past year specifically, just how with, with the pandemic, how we weathered that and how our economy is growing and so forth. And some of the awards were popping up on different lists alongside the Oklahoma cities and Austin's and Nashville's and others. Uh, we now have a brand. It feels like we're at the big table. We're never sure. gonna be one of the top 50 municipalities in the country. But we are making a pretty significant dent, I think, in that, you know, mid-market municipality is a great place to, to live and work. Yeah, and it's changing fast. And I think part of the reason for that is these awesome big projects that we've had come through the pipeline in the last couple of years. And uh, personally, what a time to be uh, yeah. chairman of the Planning Commission. Yeah. We get to see those, uh, which is an absolute blast. And uh, you think of just downtown, two projects, $400 million and uh, projects that get to come through. And, and we get to see those. And we uh, get to prove those rezones and those sub subdivision plans, uh, mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. But those things don't happen overnight and they happen over a long period of time and uh, long before they get to us. And I know you're the one who gets to have those conversations with those investors that say, hey, let's put our money in Sioux Falls. So yeah. what are those initial calls, conversations like? How do you get those uh, CJ Foods, the Amazons of the world, mm -hmm. those big tickets to come to Sioux Falls? You know, uh, it's a great question and each project is different depending on the project and what they're looking at and what their need is. Uh, you know, one of the first questions they're always asking is about our workforce. And am I going to be able to have workers to find the jobs if, if it's a big commercial project? Um, but once they can get beyond that, quite honestly, they're already sold on Sioux Falls. They're, they're calling us because they know the reputation of the city, they know the reputation of the state, they know our tax climate. Uh, they know the history of success that other businesses have had here. Uh, so a lot of times there's workforce questions. A lot of times there's how pro-business is the administration. Uh, sure. And I think the fact that you know my background is in, is in entrepreneurship and running my own company, I think that's a competitive advantage we have where you know, I've signed the front of a paycheck for a lot of years and know uh, kind of how to work my way around bureaucracy and try and get to yes as much as we can while still sticking to the confines that we have within city government. So we use that as a competitive advantage when we're talking with the CJs of the world and we're talking with the Amazons of the world to say, listen, you got a pro-business mayor. I understand yeah. workforce development. I understand some of the challenges you're going to have here, but we got solutions to help you solve, solve them. Uh, and I think that often holds a lot of water with them. And the same is true at the state level. So it's one thing to have that support in the, in the city level, but we also have a, a governor that's very pro-business, right? It's very small government, which I think a lot of businesses like to see, uh, someone who has owned a business. And so those are real competitive advantages for Sioux Falls and for the state. Yeah, it's just a phenomenal marriage, isn't it? You put Sioux Falls right here in this state and you combine the, the uh, business progressiveness attitude that we have mm -hmm. for businesses here with the, the relaxed regulations yep. and the pro-business attitude in the state and it's, uh, it's phenomenal. We've yep. been lucky to have that. Um, with that, uh, it's just come a phenomenal amount of growth. Uh, COVID happened in, uh, across the nation, across the world, and really slowed down a lot of places. And for the most part, 
at Sioux Falls from a building and planning perspective, that just didn't really happen mm -hmm. here. Um, with that, is there such thing as too much growth too fast as we skyrocket out of uh, this this COVID area era and and move forward? Do we do we have to slow down ever, or are there just certain steps we need to take along the way? Man, that's a super great question. It's one of the things that keeps me up at night, and I I always harken back to um, a time in my my business world when I was running my company. We were growing really quickly. We were growing double digit growth every year. And I remember sitting down with my partners one year and saying, hey, this year our goal needs to be just to stay flat, like no growth, because we got to sure. deal with all the challenges of all this growth over the last several years that we're still trying to figure out. So I'm not saying we're at that point, but there's also um, growth for growth's sake is not good. You want to be intentional, strategic about it, um, you know, thoughtful about it. And so when you look at subdivision plans and you look at when you're doing rezones, you say, well, this rezone may look good now. And this is the role that you guys on the Planning Commission have, that responsibility to say, hey, we're a mile from, from anything. We're going to be fine here. Yeah, but what's the, what's the 2030 plan look like? And while it may look good to have a storage facility there now, yeah. there's going to be all residential around that. Now you have a storage facility in the middle of a residential area. So. This city has done a phenomenal job of being very intentional and strategic about their growth yeah. uh, and also in how we've planned for that growth. And that's not due, quite honestly, to anyone who sits in the mayor's chair. That's good city planners and good leaders in our planning department from now Jack, Jeff Eckhoff to previously people like Mike Cooper and Steve Metley before him. And there's just always been a really good, thoughtful growth process that's happened over the years, which I think that's one thing when, when people do come to our city and have kind of a business mind and maybe a lot of urban planner bent to them, they say, man, your city is well planned. The city is well planned, like where yeah. things are. And so people notice that. Yeah, yeah. It. Uh, I, I played Sim City a lot as a kid. Oh, it kind of yeah. reminds me of the video games yeah. sometimes. And it is a game, but in reality, it's like, well, we need to have all the utilities in place first. We got to have sewer. We have to have all these things in place. Water treatment plants is one that we're thinking of now. We got to get these things done so far in advance. So when we do change, we're we're ready for it. And, and that's one of the one of the most difficult things I think our planning department has to deal with is is, I hate the term sprawl, but I mean, our tallest building in this community is the city, you know, CenturyLink building, you yep. know, downtown. Yep. And um, we're not a community that thrives on density. And we continue to push that. You talk about Sioux Steel and Sharapa, those are gonna be density developments. So we're getting more of that in the core. Where we're trying to densify those neighborhoods and densify the core more. But, you know, with four to 6,000 people that, had, you know, came to Sioux Falls last year, that's miles of road we have to add, and that's miles of infrastructure we have to add further out into the city, and that's more miles of storm sewer, and more miles of wastewater, you know, infrastructure that we have to put in. And so being intentional about that is really important, and not just growing for girls' sake, but saying, okay, how can we maybe increase the density in the core where the infrastructure already lives, right? Yep. So yep. we don't have to put in new roads. We don't have to put in new storm sewer wastewater. It's already here. So how do we capitalize on that investment we've already made? versus having to continue to reinvest in the in the suburbs and yep. sprawl wider and wider. And I think that's a, a great point. Really, the next step for this town is to do that, that reinvestment in the core. And uh, the suburbs will continue to grow. There's no doubt about that. But it has to take intent uh, to work mm -hmm. on those core areas. Um, with that, uh, this town has a phenomenal sense of uh, pride uh, in, in the things that we've accomplished in this town and the growth that we've had uh, and it's fun to be a part of and, and I think a lot of towns have that sense of pride. I don't think that's overly unique to Sioux Falls but what I've found is a little bit more unique to Sioux Falls is uh, that that pride is so extreme that we've got a little sense of ownership that all of us have in this town. We really feel like uh, we're responsible for what happens in the future and, and, and the way things look. Mm -hmm. uh, with that uh, on the opposite side of the coin some people, it's, it's it's hard when you disagree with the direction that somebody's taking, uh, or 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 the avenue that we're going down. And I think that's hard for people sometimes. And it's your job as mayor to say, hey, this is the reason why this plan and direction is the right one, and, and let's get a consensus together to go down this path because uh, we feel it's going to be beneficial for us. How do you do that? How mm. do you get? Uh, you can't ever get everybody yeah. on board, but you need to to do a good job of getting people together and and, and moving forward with some. What are the things yeah. we do to do that? You know what, planning and you guys on the planning commission or city council, planning department, uh, one of their main goals is consensus building, you know, in th throughout growth. And there's, there are people who have lived in Sioux Falls for 
30, 40, 50 years. And they say, I remember when 41st Street was just a gravel road, or I remember when it was this. And, and they're not as excited yep. about the growth as, as others would be. So how do we ensure that we're meeting the demands of a growing community, but still not taking away what's made Sioux Falls special, yep. right? And what's, what's made the, the fabric in this community so special? And so uh, ensuring we have good traffic flow as we, you know, you want to tick people off, slow down their commutes, you know, and that's just going to happen as you grow. Sure. But the more that we can invest in good traffic flow, that will continue to keep that growth manageable for people. Um, continuing to invest in good infrastructure will be really key. So in those communities, uh, maybe we're growing out towards a neighborhood that's always been in the country, and now they see the city coming up and they're not happy about it. Well, how do, we, how do we sell them on the benefits of that? Say, sure. yeah, you're losing some things on this end, but what you're going to have now is you're going to have a great school within walking distance now. You're going to have a fire station three blocks away from you. I mean, there's a lot of good community amenities that are going to now encompass your neighborhood to make your neighborhood even stronger. And so that's part of our job as a city is to show people the good sides of growth, the positive sides of growth, uh, despite some of the some of the amenities they may feel like they're losing, uh, and uh, shine a positive light on some of the things they're actually gaining. Sure. And I suppose sometimes it just takes time. Not everybody's on board right away, and you start to do those things, and they can and really uh, get get the full picture and, and really understand. It does, and you know the, the thing, Eric. Uh, you know there are people who will say they they don't want to see us grow. They won't don't want to see the community grow. And there is controlled growth, which I think is smart. But you also have to deal with the influx that's coming, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So. I, as a mayor, can't take out billboards and say, stop coming to Sioux Falls, or we're going to stop issuing building permits, or we're just going to stop growth. It's like, you can't do that. You know, this isn't China, where yeah, I can yeah. just <laughs> issue moratoriums and a dictatorship on how we do this stuff. So what we try to do is just be very strategic and intentional about it. How do we embrace the growth, but do it in a way that's very pragmatic and does not, again, I always use that term, you know, change the fabric of Sioux Falls, which has made Sioux Falls so special. Sure, sure. Thank you so much for coming on, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it's Enjoyed my pleasure. This. Yeah, Thanks for your service it. on the Planning Commission. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for watching Sioux Falls. As always, we'd like you to come down to the Planning Commission meeting. Our next meeting is September 1 at 6 p.m. at Carnegie Town Hall. Uh, we invite uh, your public input on agenda items, but also we have public input on non-agenda items as well. So uh, if you want to give a comment on the direction of the City of Sioux Falls, please come down to Carnegie Town Hall. Thank you.